Let's take a box and split it into two parts. We fill a really hot steam on the left side and really cold liquid nitrogen on the right side. What can you do with this system? Well, you can get some really useful mechanical work out of it. You take some steam, heat it, compress it, put it through some turbine, turbine rotates and creates some mechanical work. Take the steam back and cool it with the right side where you have the liquid nitrogen. But why do we need the colder side? Well, because if we don't have the colder side, the temperature of the whole system will become the same and the steam would fail to turn the turbine. That's why we need the cold side, right? And the colder the side is, the more work can be extracted from the system. We don't think of energy in that way, usually. We just assume that we need a source of high energy to create some work. What we actually need is a difference in energy density. It's the same case with hydroelectric power. You have one side with really high pressure water and the other side with low pressure water. And when the water rushes from high pressure to low pressure, you create electricity out of it. If the level of water reaches the same height, even though there is a lot of water, you cannot create any useful work out of it. And even life depends on it. Life evolved because we had a temperature differential created by the sun. Now, if we remove the partition, what will happen? Well, slowly the gases mix and there is no more useful work to be had because everything is just in equilibrium. There is no temperature differential, right? You cannot get useful work out of it. And that is the second law of thermodynamics. The entropy of a closed system increases or stays the same but never decreases. What is entropy? Okay, let's just, let's just define entropy as the inability for a system to do useful work. The initial system that I showed you has very low entropy. It's completely isolated from the outside, but slowly the ability for that system to do work decreases to zero, even without any outside intervention. And no useful work can come out of the system. Or can it? 1867, James Clark Maxwell proposed uh, this thought experiment. He said, I have a friend who can actually see individual molecules, who can detect the speed and direction of their motion. He uses that power to break the second law of thermodynamics. How? Let's see. Let's go back to the partition. Let's go back to the box. We have a partition. Let's put a gate in the partition. There is a gate and what this guy does is I will let all the fast moving particles leave the left side and go to the right side and I will let all the slow moving particles stay in the left side and I will do the opposite on the right side. Did you get that? Did you understand? Did you get it? Slowly, all the high speed particles will be on the right side, all the low speed particles will be on the left side and what is temperature? The higher the temperature of something, the faster its molecules are jiggling. That's, that's what actually temperature is. It's, a, it's an emergent property of matter. We'll come back to that. But what has happened here is that this guy has taken a system that had no ability to do useful work and he got some temperature differential out of it, which means that you can now get useful work out of it. Isn't it breaking the second law of thermodynamics? Didn't we just say entropy cannot be reversed? What happened? Who's cheating? The Maxwell's demon. The Maxwell's demon that subverts the natural law and breaks the second law of thermodynamics. So what is going on? We need to look at entropy again. What is entropy? Some people think entropy is a measure of disorder of a system. But that's a little misleading because a system that is really disordered for me can be ordered for you. Order and disorder can be, in, can be a subjective term and in that sense entropy as a measure of disorder can be a little misleading and it's generally considered not a right analogy. Another way to look at entropy is to first consider how we conduct statistical mechanics. When we are studying systems 
that are way more complex than the individual particles that make up that system. For example, weather or economy, a river flowing. All these systems are so complex when taken as a whole because of the individual moving parts, which are simple in themselves, but they are so numerous and so many interac interactions that they create a complex system. So to understand those systems, we cannot look at the individual particles, the individual moving parts, the individual building blocks. We have to look at the whole system. That field of study is called statistical mechanics. In the case of gases, we have these handy things called the pressure of a gas or the volume of the gas and the temperature of the gas. Look, if you have a system in front of you, the specific values of pressure, volume and temperature would signify a macro state of that system. While the position and velocity of each particle would signify a micro state, of the system, we can see that for each specific macro state, there can be a large number of possible micro states. For the same pressure, volume and temperature of a gas, the individual molecules can be in vastly different orientation. But for some macro states, the possible number of micro states would be less than some other macro states. Let's go back to our box now. Let me ask you this question. Which of these two macro states has more number of micro states? Well, if your answer is B, you're right. When we say that the left side of the chamber is hot and the right side of the chamber is cold, we are putting some restrictions in the way the molecules can be. In the second case, there are no such restrictions. Restrictions reduce the number of possibilities. When we left the system alone in state one, the system moved from a macro state, which has less possibilities of micro states, to a state which has more possibilities of micro states. And this is the crux of entropy. Entropy can be defined in terms of microstates. Your system will always move from a state which has less number of microstates to a state which has more number of microstates. Nothing in the laws of physics are actually stopping your system from going in the opposite direction because there are so many more possibilities in the state B than the state A. Over time, the system will assume a state which correlates to state B rather than state A. How does this new definition of entropy affect the problem of Maxwell's demon? Well, when the system was in equilibrium, it had maximum entropy. And our original system of hot and cold sides had lower entropy. But as we keep adding more and more restrictions to the system, the entropy keeps on decreasing. If we continue on this path and keep adding more and more restrictions, eventually each restrictive box will only contain one molecule. If we have two molecules with different speeds, theoretically we can get some work out of it, right? But look at the system. If, if the whole system is mixed together, this system, our system right here, where there are a lot of restrictive boxes, it kind of looks similar to a system in equilibrium, does it not? It does. It does look similar to a system in equilibrium. The only difference, the only difference is in the first case, we have the knowledge, we have information of where each molecule lies. And in the, in the case of equilibrium, we do not have that information. And that is the difference between high entropy and low entropy. The entropy was reduced purely because we had information about the system. So, coming back to Maxwell's demon, the fact that Maxwell's demon knew about the molecules, knew the Maxwell's demon could see individual molecules and see their velocities, 
at that point itself, the entropy of that system was reduced from the point of view of that demon. The whole charade of the gate and the partition and the separation is all a red herring. It, it's unimportant to the problem. The, the entropy had already reduced. The entropy of the system had already reduced as soon as the demon got the information about the system. Information is the key here. Information is linked to thermodynamic entropy in a very fundamental manner. And we will explore this in the next video. The problem of the problem is still there. We still haven't really understood the connection between how does information reduce entropy? Is it breaking the second law again, but in a different way? Have we really explained? I'm not sure. I don't know. And we will explore that in the next video when we understand um, information theory that was put forth by Claude Shannon. Why have I named this channel WikiLearn is because I am a student. I'm not claiming to be a teacher of anything. I'm not an expert in science. I'm a student. And as I go through these subjects with you, one by one, I'll be learning along with making the videos. I'll go into the depths and I'll come up with an explanation and share it with you guys. And this model really depends on you guys, whoever you who is watching the video, comment and tell me if you really understood the video, if it makes sense. Just comment your your views. If if I miss something, if I'm wrong, if 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 you are a, if you are a scientist yourself, let me know. If if I made a mistake, I'll I'll be op open to changes and all those things. And let's see. Let's see where it takes us. See you.